19.84. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Most of the time. I'm beginning to believe that more important. <laughs> all, all the time. <laughs> okay. Can I have a motion to adopt the July 12th Board of Education agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. So I have a, a motion by uh, Commissioner Paul and a second by Commissioner Ardry. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. Safety message. Commissioner Ardry. So one of the things you'll notice as we look at our um, update for our insurance policy, what drives the cost quite honestly is workers comp. So if we think about the impact of workers comp, well, what's the first piece of it? Preventing the injury. So habits can help with injury prevention. And just so everybody understands, this was a message that we had at Align Energy. Um, so I'm just, still and shamelessly from that. Um, but I, I want to pause for a second. So the reason why I'm still in shamel shamelessly, and those of you that have been around, we've had a goal of zero injuries. And this year, uh, this is mostly wood, um, we're at two injuries this year. So out of our territory from Spirit Lake, Iowa, to Sheboygan, Lake Geneva, and all along the river in far western Iowa, over the whole territory, we've had two lost time injuries. So I don't just say this, it's one of the things that's ingrained, and this is the push that really I've had for the district, because it's possible. So if you don't put it out there, you never think about it and focus on those things, but it's possible. When we started, we had over 200 injuries and that was probably 20-ish or so years ago. So I feel pretty good that we are moving definitely in the right direction. So as we think about um, injury prevention, the number one thing that ends up getting us all is complacency. It's the hardest thing to trigger on is simply when we're just doing what we normally do and we don't think about it. And those are the exact times that we have to take a moment and really think about what we're doing. Um, complacency leads to all the main causes of injuries, eyes and mind on task. So if we are looking at what we're doing, we're moving in the direction and our eyes are with us, not bagging up and not looking backwards, but if the direction we're moving, if our eyes are on it, we're better off. Been in the line of fire, just simply where you're at, what could happen, and um, loss of balance, traction and grip. How do we fight complacency when it's it's <clears throat> when it's almost by definition a state we're not aware of when we're in it? So how do you really fight it? You have to constantly think safety and go on what can happen, what can go wrong. And I share this, and I'm not going to continue to read here, as I was being complacent myself. As we see with a finger here, I don't really want to share my boo-boo here, but in fact, I was being complacent. And what did I do? I was closing a car door. And I didn't move my hand in time. I was tired. Um, it was, I think, 2, 2.30 in the morning. I had to move the car. And like I normally do, I hit the remote, locked the door, and pushed the door closed, and I didn't move my hand. And it was funny. Well, it wasn't funny, but I would have liked to have seen the camera of me trying to get my finger out when the keys were in my right pocket, so I'm trying to get the keys to unlock the door. It was ridiculous. Um, fortunately, it ends up being just blood caught under my nail at the moment. Um, hurt quite a bit. I sure I, well, I actually didn't say any colorful language. I sure thought it. Uh, <laughs> um, but it was just a perfect example for me doing something I always am doing, but the state of being fatigued and the time, and I just didn't do it. So how do we prevent those things? By recognizing and then being hypervigilant at that time. So had I said, okay, Greg, you're tired. Be very deliberate. Be very deliberate. 
locked door, step back, close, and then I don't have an ugly dog. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad that's that that's the extent of it. So, okay. Uh, consent agenda. Do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. That was uh, Commissioner Ardry and Commissioner Dommerhausen. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, board items 3.1, new athletic director, Mr. Garner. Good evening, commissioners. It is um, the second time's a charm. It's through a long uh, time of searching that we found our uh, director of athletics for our district. I'm very excited to announce from the Nina Appleton area, Mr. Jim McLowry is our director of athletics. Jim, why don't you come on up and introduce yourself to the board? Dr. Holtzman, board, thank you so much. Um, I want to tell you about my first two weeks so far. So uh, I have not, haven't had an opportunity to be in many of the schools, meet with many of the principals, athletics directors, uh, some parents, some of our student athletes as well. And um, as, as, as I thought, uh, there's people in this community that are invested, and there's people in this community that do not want to be complacent, and that's the part of the community I want to be. Th thank you for having the vision to uh, embrace education-based athletics. Thank you so much for realizing the impact it has in kids' lives. And uh, um, going into my 30th year in education, I am very excited and I'm inspired to be um, on this leadership team for your school district. I am uh, anxious and happy and um, uh, excited about the challenges ahead, but uh, I plan on uh, we're going to get the job done here and we're going to uh, make sure education-based athletics is something that has an opportunity to impact our kids in the right way. So thank you for taking a chance on me and I'm uh, just delighted to have this opportunity. So thank you. Thank you. And we have another new face, too, a uh, new principal at Jackson Elementary School, Mr. Gardner. Yes, I'm here again. Uh, new face <laughs> as principal, but not a new face to the district. Ms. Sarah Bram, if you could, Bram, if you could come up, please. And um, Sarah's been with us uh, a number of years, started at Kennedy, and now has uh, been at Jackson. She served as the interim principal uh, during Ms. Moison's leave and um, has done a fantastic job. So here's Sarah. Good evening, commissioners. I just want to um, take this time tonight to thank you, the team of directors, as well as Jackson staff for giving me this opportunity to serve as the principal at Jackson for the 22-23 school year and hopefully beyond that. Um, as uh, Scott said, I've been in the district since 2013, starting as that loop, first and second grade looping teacher at Kennedy, the last year over at Jackson as the academic learning coach, and then shifted into the interim position. Jackson is a very unique school, um, and I couldn't quite think of one word to describe until I heard Tina Johnson say the word magical, and that truly is what Jackson is, magical. Our students come to school every day full of love and excitement to learn, and our staff really share in that excitement as well, and they wrap their arms around every single child that enters the door. So I'm really looking forward to and excited to support our staff um, in growing our students not only academically, but socially, emotionally, so that way they can grow up to be a positive contribution in our Janesville community. So thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Gardner, we've got yet another yes. another announcement. Another or, or not an announcement, but a recommendation. Another this is going to be a very exciting recommendation here um, for Ms. Thea Murphy to be the new Assistant Director of Pupil Services. Thea has been with us since 2012, uh, was started at, I believe, Jackson, and um, was a teacher there and has built her way up. She's certainly ser currently serving as a coordinator of special education, has, wor has worked with Ms. Aaron Boom for the last couple of years in that role. Um, Kim and her team uh, picked Ms. Murphy based on the merits of her uh, of her work. So uh, it is with great pleasure I, that the administration recommends Ms. Murphy to be given 
a one-year contract uh, upon board approval. A contract will begin July 1, which is already passed, but if you approve it, it will go retroactive. Um, she will work 260 days per contract year. It is recommended she receive a total salary of $113,000 for, for her work. Okay, thank you very much. This is an action item, so do I have a motion to accept the recommendation? Oh, okay. So, um, all right, Commissioner Herta, uh, Commissioner Hannah Wall on the second. Uh, any discussion or questions? No? All right. All right. Well, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Great. Thank, Thank you so very much. much. That's wonderful. And your very first superintendent update. Mr. Holzman. Well, first I want to say thank you so much for um, the opportunity to serve here uh, in this great district. I've had the opportunity to meet with a few of the board members um, already this week. Um, again, thank you to the board for uh, allowing me the eight days prior to July 1 to just get into the schools and meet the principals and uh, be able to kind of meet some of our members in the community. Uh, Great few weeks um, that I've been in a district here. Um, obviously, I've relied uh, heavily on Denise, and uh, she's been a great partner in just trying to help me, uh, not just in the organization that I need here for the district, but also uh, just moving into uh, the community. So we're grateful for that. And the directors have been uh, also great in just trying to help me uh, organize how we're doing things here. Um, had an opportunity on um, Monday to meet with our principals and talk a little bit about their goals and what we're doing uh, this summer, and we're really excited about some of the preliminary data that we're reviewing uh, that would indicate uh, some positive growth with our students. Um, as I think about some of the things that are moving forward, I, I think about Sarah, and I met her uh, at, at the school uh, when she was an interim, and uh, she introduced me, and I got to stay on the green stage. You have a little video board that and uh, welcomed me to her school and made me feel very welcome, gave me a T-shirt and part of the uh, routine. So that was really great. And then I actually didn't, you know, sometimes you hear names, but you don't recognize. And all of a sudden I saw, well, uh, last um, spring I was standing next to Jim at a baseball sectional um, that uh, a district that I was representing at a time and, and he was representing were playing against each other. And so we were um, describing our knowledge on uh, all the things about how it would be so easy if it was, right? But um, <laughs> the game is really easy when you're about 60 feet away from it. Um, uh, but uh, again, just kind of a small uh, world where you, you make paths and you cross people. So I've had some great opportunities to meet people um, great opportunities to uh, continue to look forward to that. Uh, very, very welcomed uh, here at the district office and in this community. So uh, I don't know that I'll make a habit of having a uh, superintendent message, but I just want to say thank you. And the people are being real kind. Things are going great. And uh, I'm really looking forward to continuing to do the work here uh, throughout the summer and get to know people and uh, this community. And uh, we'll look forward to getting this school year started. Believe it or not, here we are in the second week of July. And uh, we're thinking about uh, what the beginning of the new teacher week is going to look like. And you got an invitation there. So uh, we're looking forward to it. And I uh, can't wait to continue the momentum that we have. Thank you very much. OK, uh, next item is to consider approval of non-certified staff salary increase. Uh, Mr. Garner and Mr. McRae. Good evening again. Um, historically, the board has looked to, to approve this in October, November, um, when we actually have the approved approved budget. Um, but in conferring with Mr. McRae and super, then Superintendent Pufal, we thought because of the current work environment, uh, it's challenging, it's competitive. We're competing with many other entities for staff, and we want to make sure that the staff understand what their wages are uh, and when they can get them. And so in looking at this, for years we've had uh, what we call budget assumptions, and Dan has assured me, and uh, obviously they're part of the current, current year, this year's, next year's budget. Um, he has already assumed that the staff outside of the teacher salary structure will receive the 3.8. And so all in all the information he shared with you, that has been included in the assumptions. So um, we, we wanted to bring it here early so that we didn't have to go too much retroactive with 
people because historically when we do that in October, we have to retroactive pay, retroactively pay all support staff back to July 1st. And, and that does cause a little bit of um, heartburn for our payroll staff. As you know, we're pretty thin when it comes to payroll. Uh, we only have two people and to process 1,600, uh, oh, uh, I, I apologize, 900 um, payrolls, it's a little bit it's a little bit difficult when you look at that retroactively. So we're asking tonight that the board approve the 3.8% raise. The total cost of that, and Mr. McCray, correct me if I'm wrong, is 580,000 estimated dollars? We never estimate, we approximate. We approximate, that, I, we've talked about that, yes. We approximately $580,000, um, give or take. Uh, so with your permission and, and approval tonight, we'll move forward with that. and. Um, provide our staff some stability during this time, especially with inflation the way it is. And, um, some security, especially for the year-round staff. Our, our school year staff would see this, obviously, in August. Our year-round staff would see it their next paycheck. Okay, great. Do I have uh, a motion to approve? So moved. Okay. So I have um, Commissioner Hayworth on the motion and the second from Commissioner Dommerhausen. Any discussion or questions? No? Okay. Hearing none, um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You. Oh. I actually have a question. Oh, oh you have a question. Yes. Okay. Uh, Actually, it be approved before I ask because it wasn't material to the vote. Um, so as the salary structure that was presented, how does this 3.8% increase look going into that structure? Is it 3.8% across the whole structure? So if you could just explain that. So the 3.8% is really, it's not about so much the structure, it's, it's about the uh, total movement on the structure and that amount from last year's wages to this year's wages for teachers. So that difference is what we call the 3.8%. Um, and that's how we've always calculated the, the average raise for our staff. So what we, we assume, uh, and, and Dan, I, you can jump in, what we assume then is that difference is, is there's a 3.8 because that's all the money we pumped into the teacher salary structure. That's the average over this, the salary structure for the teachers uh, raise. Um, but we assume then that that difference represents that average, if I'm making sense. Mostly. So I, I think the next, and I understood, well, I, I understood it beforehand, um, but not a but. So how, how about everybody else? Maybe that's my other question. Mm -hmm. This was focused on the non-certified staff. So this is all other staff not on the teacher's structure. Right. So this is everyone else. Okay. Yeah. So, and as we look at the teachers, we already, with respect to what we've done, we've already set that. Um, so you already received those. If you're asking me, uh, yes. So they've already received the raise based on their movement on the structure. So that's their increase. That this is not part of that. The teacher is not part of this. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now I'll go back to the structure. Okay. So, and I'm talking the per professional, not so much the secretarial. Okay. Or was there a separate for structure for? everybody else outside of the paraprofessional group? Or was that all wrapped up in the same structure that we approved? So what you're talking about is the class four pay structure, uh -huh. which um, the, the average raise in that particular structure was 4.15, but we are looking to make sure people get at least what we've approved as 3.8. Um, the majority of them do, there are a few that we have to look at. Okay, so I'm just trying to understand the steps here. So the structure was we approved. For class four you're talking about now. Yes, yes. Yep. right. Mm -hmm. So where does the 3.8 come in at, or was that wrapped up in that as an assumption already? 
Nope, that was separate. So we have the pay structure for the class four. We have the teacher structure, which is also separate. But then what everybody else then looks at a 3.8. So we'll have to look at our new para structure because our class four structure to see, to make sure that it's equal to what everybody else is getting. We have to, there are a few that we have to review, but there's not many in terms of many staff I'm talking about mm -hmm. who receive less than that. Sure, okay. I wish I had a whiteboard. It, this would have been easier. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yep. Sorry to stay out of that. So the para structure that we did last month, I think it was, that's not getting 4.125 plus 3.8. No. No. It's making sure at least 3.8 within the 4.125. Right. Thank that's you. what we're looking at. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. President, could I uh, make a... Sure. Um, I, as I talk about what I'm supposed to do, uh, I believe last year the board had to come back because I don't believe it was the intent when we say everybody but to include the superintendent. And then we had to make a vote, I think, if you recall, yes. to not include that. Yes. So maybe we could make an amendment to that because I don't believe that was the board's interest this time. Right. Oh, right? That's, that's yeah, right. We that's didn't right. have to do that. Yep. So do we have – well, it is – talking about the superintendent. Sure. Okay, so I we don't have um, – it, the motion is already passed. I think that we might have to deal with that in our next meeting. If I if I may add to that, yes. so any um, so any new employee this year yes. would be assigned that salary. They don't receive the three point eight, okay. so they get the three point eight based on their last year's salary. So so he's excluded. Yeah, you're set. Oh, thank you're you very set. much. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. You bet. All right. Then what about yeah. directors? So directors get three point eight. We are included in that group. Yes. You're the non-certified. We're support staff. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? All right. Okay. Thank you very much. So we're moving on here to finance buildings and grounds. Commissioner Ardry. Yes. Thank you. And I'm. I'm going to forego an adjective for a meeting, although I like the magical one. Maybe I have to come up, <laughs> look for a meeting where we've had a magical meeting. Um, so we met at Marshall Middle School, and the main reason for meeting at Marshall is really to walk through um, where we are at with the um, secure pathway project at Marshall, the boiler secure project at Monroe. So that was really the, the big impact impotence of us meeting there. Um, several of the highlights, which we've already passed, the financial um, summary updates. Um, and as I alluded to earlier, talking about the workers' compensation, um, as we review the district liability property and the workers' compensation renewals, the Dan and team were able to do a fantastic job of really not having much of an increase over where we were at. Um, some things seem to be rather interesting, I will say, particularly in light of our um, IT issue and how that really didn't have much of an impact in any of the insurance um, rates at all, which is, that, that is interesting, I guess. That's the best word for that. Um, the capital maintenance updates, along with the referendum projects, they are proceeding as going well. Um, continue to have delays on receiving um, all of everything to finish. So we actually have no finished projects at this point, um, which is a bit frustrating, but we're definitely moving toward completion of phase one um, and phase two and then phase three are well underway as we saw at Marshall for sure. Um, What else did we talk about? Oh, I know. My, my big one. <clears throat> we did review the RFPs going out for the ESSER 3 facility improvement projects. Um, not much to say on those until we really receive the RFPs and make selections and see what work we ultimately will be doing um, within that package plan. Um, more importantly, and I guess this is one, as as we talk school finance and funding and the craziness that it is, um, you know, we're into a current year. 
and we're spending money and we still don't actually know for sure the amount of money that we're getting from a revenue standpoint. Um, we get projections from a state aid and property tax and it appears to be a shift this year. Um, less on um, homeowners, more on um, from state aid, but yet, you know, I've been pushing and really to at least let's approve a preliminary budget. Um, since we're spending money, we should actually have a preliminary budget that we're working from. Um, much like Scott came to bring some solidification for our staff, knowing about raises and things, it would be nice from an operational basis to say we can at least do this much. Um, unfortunately, the way the funding structure is, we can't do it any sooner since we don't get final numbers until October. Um, so we talked about that whole budget development process with the expectation of having a preliminary budget to review and us to discuss next month. Uh, we've actually talked about that. I, it's kind of an ongoing pull push with dad and I. Um, it, but I will say, and that's, of course, in the midst of us going through an audit, too. So um, that's the timing for the audit and everything. So that will be an expectation that's coming forward um, for next month for us to discuss in detail. Um, and I believe that was it. Our next meeting is August 16th. Same date as the welcome back. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, Commissioner Hanwell. Greg, who's uh, responsible for the, the security of the equipment in the buildings being open? I know that they're open and they're probably locked up by the end of the day when the, the, the people are leaving, but monitoring that stuff. The reason I ask is um, last week or the week before I was driving by, and I want to say it was Monroe, but it, I hard to say. Um, there was some young boy, probably just curious, as young boys are, about equipment and stuff, kind of hanging around and looking. And it was, I want to say it was around five, six-ish. Uh, construction equipment for the yeah. projects? Yeah. Um, it would be the individual contractors. Okay. They're responsible for that. So I've seen some of that myself, and i kind of going, huh, well, but that's on them. Um You bring up a good point, not so much directly, but as we think about security, um, and I, so what I don't want us to really think in terms of having secure pathways and having a false sense of security, that that is the answer. Because our behavior and practices will always trump the best mechanical and operational stuff we have. So for me, That'll be one of the pushes because I went into a school pretty much open and that was my concern. So it's the case that, yes, it's summertime and we become complacent because it is summertime because we don't have the hundreds or, you know, if it's a high school, over a thousand students there that then we may relax some of our practices. So that'll be something that really we need to make sure that we're focused and not just relying on secure pathways as the answer. Our, um, pol well, not our policy, our literal behavior and procedures need to address these things. I understand it's easy to have people come and go, but easy leaves um, us in a, we're open. <laughs> so, so that point, you know, it's really contractors, but I look at it kind of in a little bigger sense than that, so. I think we have to look at the bigger picture because the contractors may be responsible, but it's on our ground. So therefore, what's our responsibility and the attorneys will test it. So I just thought I'd bring that up. Thank you. Anything else? I have a question about your um, uh, preliminary budget idea. And I just wanted to clarify something. I just want to know what, what in your vision at this point, maybe, and maybe you, you, you haven't quite 
uh, develop that. What's the difference between that and a budget assumption proposal? Going from assumption to more of a, an approximation. I won't say estimate. I'll go with approximation. Um, because, I mean, we're spending money. Yeah. So the expenses, the expenditure, we're, there's a target. We already, well, we don't know exactly what our revenue is going to be, but we have a, here's the preliminary view of what it'll be from the state. So I'm just, well, let's pull these things together mm -hmm. and not have this, hanging question mark of our spin, you know, what are we exactly doing to solidify? So if there are plans that might hedge on some sense of, of the financial side, then we can make the decision and then move forward with that. Okay. So. okay. Well, great. Thanks. I, I yeah. think, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say just to, to finish that. Yeah. So like for the ESSER three facility improvement projects, RFP comes back, well, there's so much in ESSER funds that are going from an academic standpoint, but then the facility piece, well, then it would be nice to know if there's any impact budgetarily, and let's factor that in it's right from the beginning, as opposed to losing several months of ground before we do that. Okay. Thanks. Carl, you have a question? Well, yeah, I just want, maybe you're looking, and I don't know if this will help, but looking at a balance sheet in areas. What do we have? What do we spend? What do we have left to do? And what do we have to do it? I'm looking at a balance sheet, Ed, rather than the budgetary. Uh, and I think they're the both the same, but they have a little different connotation. So I don't know if that would help. And you think you're going to, you're thinking that's on that's on the next agenda for your meeting or? I would think so. Okay. If not, if not Dan the next. Dan is saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyway. As I said, we were pushing. Uh, I'm pushing that way. And Dad isn't pushing back on me. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, I don't have any new board requests just yet, but we do have some things that we've sort of talked about that might end up becoming board requests. Um, and uh, future meeting dates and times. Uh, Mrs. Jensen, can you help me out with that? It would be my pleasure. Uh, the next Board of Education meeting will be held on Tuesday, August 9th at 6 p.m. here at the Educational Services Center. We have a Finance, Buildings, and Grounds Committee meeting on Tuesday, August 16th at 4 p.m. Location is to be determined. And the Final Board of Education meeting for August will be on Tuesday, August 23rd at 6 p.m. again here at the Educational Services Center. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Looks like we've uh, reached the end of our agenda. We are adjourned. Thanks. <laughs>